All right, for this belt work, I think we'd do it on our head if that was a positive 19, but it's negative, so we've got to keep that in mind when we're working with this one. And I'm going to use principles of equality for it. So let's take this and uh, apply a principle of equality. Now, the nice thing about this problem right now is that the coefficient of x right now is already a 1. So when we drop it, which we will drop it, it it's already a 1x, okay? It's the 14, the plus 14, that I do not want there, so I'm going to have to zero that out because it's being added to the 1x. So remember, we want to, if we have either the addition or subtraction principles of equality, we have to make zeros. And that's what we're doing here, okay? So uh, that's plus 14. I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides, which will then make that zero. And zero right there, but if I do it to one side, that's the principle of equality stuff. I must do it to the other side, okay? So that's, uh, not, that's now negative 19 minus 14, which looks like it's negative 33. If, uh, and there's not really an expectation that you do that in your head. You should be doing that on the calculator, okay? Negative 19 minus 14. So this one, would, would it work though? Would this actually be the solution? Well, let's find out. If I take this one X and replace it with negative 33, then I'd have negative 33 plus 14. Yeah, that would give us negative 19 right there. So that gives us a true statement. That means, that this is actually our solution. As our objective, two objectives. I can simplify an equation with distribution and combining like terms if it needs to be. And then also I can solve an equation that requires many principles of equality. Generally speaking, we're only looking at two. But it's possible in the future you may see more than two at a time. Okay, but now we're gonna see more of this stuff with combining like terms and distribution in our equation. Pretty much everything we're going to see today is stuff we've seen before, but we're now combining a couple of different concepts, which we did see. We saw an example that required distribution and combining like terms in an equation in the first lesson of this unit. So remember that a solution is a value that you can replace the letter with to make it a true statement, right? Because if we saw something like this, yeah, 10 equals 10, that's already a true statement. And remember, that's what equal signs tell us. They're trying to tell us that it should be true, but if it's false, that's okay. We just need to identify it as false. Uh, it's just sometimes even the 10 is broken up, just like we've seen in the past. Something like 8 plus 2, that would still be a true statement, but if we replace the 2 with a letter, then we need to know what value to replace the letter with to make it true, something like this. All right. Now we would say x being 2, that would be the solution to this equation. Let's go back a little bit here to the distributed property. This is the first thing you should do if you need it. And how will you know if you need it? You're going to see some parentheses like this. Now, sometimes we know that negatives are shown as in parentheses, but uh, whether we see them or not, we're really looking for anything that's being operated on the inside of that parentheses, such as a plus or minus sign, like here. All right, and after that, all you're doing is distributing. And remember, distribution means multiplication. That's why we're taking the a times b and then adding it, because it was already an addition sign. We're adding that to a times c, okay? Now, really, if we were to see something like this with distribution, with subtraction between the two, then I would look at this right here as a times b, which is good. But the second term right here, this one, I would look at it as a times negative c. And then if the sign is negative, then I would make this operation minus. If it comes out as a positive, then I would keep that as a plus sign. And then remember, combining like terms, we're just looking for any terms that are like each other. So usually all we're dealing with for us are x terms and constants. That's it. And even when we're using principles of equality, we apply principles of equality to like terms. So um, if for some reason, I don't know, 3x plus 2 equals 4. Um, well, let's add something up. Let's make that a plus 5x. You, you may see something like this in the future, but just not today. So you, you wouldn't want to say, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, but you definitely, this is what you do not want to do right here, is take the 5x and subtract 2, because you can't subtract 2 from x's. These aren't even like terms that you can combine this way. So remember that com combining like terms has to do specifically with addition or subtraction.
Combining like terms has nothing to do with multiplication or division. When it's multiplication, then it's a distribution type problem. And if we can remember that stuff, if we can remember that combining like terms is only addition and subtraction and distribution is multiplication, and it's going to make these problems a lot more simple for us. So here's our principles of equality. I just can't emphasize this enough. We use addition and subtraction. We're going to do that to make zeros. And we did use addition or, or subtraction on the bell word. We did not use multiplication or division, though, which we have in previous sections and units. Right here, we use multiplication and, and division. And it's not just to make ones randomly. It's really to make coefficients ones. All right. And yes, it does usually go in that order. Generally speaking, we'll make ones first. And of course, that's after all the distribution can be completed. And after all the uh, combining like terms can be completed. Once we make zeros, then we will look second to make ones. It's just from time to time, and I don't think we're going to see anything like this in this unit, but from time to time, you'll have to make zeros twice. As long as you've distributed and combined like terms first, okay? And then, of course, you're just looking to make the coefficient one. So first distribution, this is the order, distribution, combine like terms, and then use principles of equality, which generally take this order right here. So here's one right here, and I don't see any parentheses just to start out with, because that's the first thing I should look to do is distribute, right? Well, I don't see any distribution on this one, so I'm not going to worry about it, which means I can go straight into combining like terms. And like we've seen in the past, some of you benefit from seeing a 1y right there. Really, it's a negative 1y term. But if you'd like to see that 1 right there, instead of it being a phantom 1, show it so it's not hidden. Now... Even, even with the principles of equality, some, some of you may benefit from just putting a line through the equal sign right here, just so you can see that it's separated. We're not, we're not look, we cannot combine like terms on like this negative 4. I can't combine it with the negative 36 directly. When we're dealing with an equal sign like this, we have to use principles of equality if we're going to combine like terms across the equal sign. So I'm looking only first to combine the like terms, which in this case is just the y's, okay? So that's negative seven y's and then negative one y's really comes out as negative seven minus one, which is negative eight y's. Okay, so I'll take my negative four, I'm gonna drop it. We still got the equal sign right here and then even the negative 36, it just drops. Now we're looking at an equation that we're a little bit more familiar with because now there's no need to combine like terms on either side of the equal sign. Uh, we can just solve using principles of equality. So, Let's do that. So again, I'm going to drop my equal sign down here. And it's that minus 4. I, I want to isolate the negative 8y's. Remember, that means that I'm just going to keep them by themselves. I'm, I need to just be able to drop that negative 8y. I don't want to see anything added or subtracted to it on either side of it. It's that minus 4. It has to go, since it's a negative 4 term, I would need to add 4 to make that a 0. It's just, if I do it to one side, i got to do it to the other side as well. So plus 4. So that will zero that out as planned. And then we've got negative 36 plus 4, which is going to be negative 32. Okay, so we made the zero. La last thing we need to do here is to make the coefficient of y a 1. So just like we saw on the last slide with the principles of equality, we made a zero first using principles of equality. And now we need to combine like terms. Uh, sorry, we need to make the coefficient of y a 1. So here's the principle of equality right here. How do we make that finally a 1y? Just take the negative 8 and divide it by itself. Just if you do it to one side, don't forget to do it the other side. So now that's negative 32 divided by negative 8. If you need to, put that in the calculator. If you get your division facts memorized, that's good too. But either way, it needs to be 4. Okay, so 1y equals 4. And while I probably won't do this on all the problems, we need to go back to the original problem right now and just check. I'm going to show more work than is necessary, but it's good if we can check this just to make sure that if I replace y with 4, that I get a true statement, right? So let's take that original equation. We've got negative 7y minus 4 minus y. This needs to equal negative 36. 
at least if, if we get a true statement out of this, right? So I'm going to take my y's, both of them, because there's two of them there, and I'm going to replace them both with 4. Now it is possible in the future you may see that you have some x's to replace on the right side of the equal sign, but not on this one. So I'm ready now to evaluate this. I got a uh, question mark over my equal sign because I don't know if this is true. But negative 7 times 4 is negative 28. So I still got minus 4, and that, that comes out as minus 4 as well. Would this equal negative 36? Well, negative 4 minus 4 would be negative 32. Then I still subtract 4 to get this negative 36. Yeah, negative 36 right there. That, that does equal negative 36. That's true. And since it is true, now I know for sure that y equals 4. That's my solution. All right, now there's a bit of a shortcut with this. And like I said, in the future, I probably won't show this much work because you can just put this in the calculator. Negative 7 times 4 minus 4 minus 4. And you can use the parentheses if you'd like, but the calculator would evaluate that for you without having to do all this work by hand like I did right here. Then it will show you negative 36, this one, and then you see it's equal to negative 36. That's true. Now, the other thing I want to show on this is when we work with equations, especially through the principles of equality, we should see some values come up again and again, such as uh, the negative 32 right here. When I did negative 28 minus 4, that was negative 32. That was shown in the work as we were solving the equation with this principle of equality right there. All right? And even the like the negative 36, yeah, that, that happened right here at the very end. Now with that much, try this one out. Take a minute, try it out, and then we'll go over it. So on this one, uh, on that last problem, actually, we, we had to combine some, some variables, right? And that's okay because they're still like terms. This one, however, we're going to look to combine these two constants. That's negative 18 and negative 2. I, again, it does read as negative 18 minus 2, which is just negative 20 right there. All right? And we see on the right side, we got x minus 15. Those are not like terms that we can combine, so I'm not going to. I need to leave those alone for now, keep them separated. And like I said before, if you'd like to see that as 1x, that's good. You can. It's still good. It's just right now, I want that 1x by itself. And the nice thing right, right here, too, is that it's a coefficient of x that's 1. So I just need to get rid of that negative 15 using a principle of equality. So that's what I will do. I'm going to take that negative 15 and add 15 to make it a 0. But the principles of equality say if I do it to one side, I'm going to have to do it to the other side as well. And that does exactly what we wanted it to do, to zero that out which then allows us to take that 1x and just drop it. All right? So then we got negative 20 plus 15. That's going to give us negative 5 right there. Now, if, if the coefficient of x was anything but a 1, then I'd be looking to make it a 1. But it's already there, so I don't need to worry about that garbage. Which means that right now I can go into the equation, the original equation, just see if it gives us something true. So the original equation, negative 18 minus 2, needs to equal x minus 15. Now, we already did negative 18 minus 2, right? That was a negative 20. But will this equal, and that's the real question, x minus 15, if I take the x and replace it with the value we found for x is negative 5? Well, yeah, negative 5 minus 15, that's negative 20. See right here? Now it's true. And since replacing the x with negative 5 here in the original equation made it true, well, now I know that negative 5, that's my solution. Maybe we'll see a little bit of distribution like we do on this one. But even after the distribution on this, I think some of you see this right now without doing any of the work. You see that there's no need for combining like terms afterwards, which we have seen a little bit of before. So just understand that it's possible to need to distribute and then combine like terms, but this one, only distribution and then principles of equality, okay? So let's go ahead and do that then. So I'm going to take this. It's a negative 9 being multiplied by the parentheses. So I've got to take the negative 9 and distribute it. That's what distribution is. It's multiplication. So I'm going to take the negative 9 and multiply it by the 8x's. 
And how many x's does that give us? Looks like uh, negative 72 x's right here. Then I've got to take the negative 9 and distribute it to the 12 as well. So that reads as negative 9 times. That's positive 12. But that results in negative uh, uh -oh, 108. Yep, there we go. Negative 108. Okay, so since it was a negative 108, I just show it as a minus sign right here. Well, this is supposed to equal the negative 36. I'm just going to keep it there. Okay? Because on the right side of the equal sign, there was nothing to combine that negative 36 with. It just stays the same. But now I have a new equation. It's the same exact equation. It's just looking a little different because we did the distribution. But it has exactly the same value after the distribution. So I need to maintain the equality here as I move through this problem using now principles of equality. So that's what I will do. Let's go and drop our equal sign there. And right now I got the negative 72x. I'd like to isolate them, get them by themselves. That's what isolate means. So I gotta, I gotta take this negative 108 and I gotta zero it out. That means I'm gonna have to take it and add pretty much it to itself. Okay? So it's negative 108 plus 108. But the principles of equality tell us if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other side as well. All right, so that's gonna zero that out as planned. And that allows me to isolate the negative 72x it's just by itself. Okay, then we got negative 36 plus 108. You can use the calculator for that if you need to. Looks like we're going to get 72. Oh, that's going to be very nice. So I thought we might end up with a fraction here, but negative 36 plus 108, 72. And last thing I need here at the very end is I need that to be uh, not just negative 72x, I need 1x's. Okay, so how do you make a negative 72 coefficient of 1? Just take this, take that coefficient, negative 72, and divide it by itself. It's just, like we've seen before, principles of equality. If you do it to one side, make sure to do it to the other side as well. So I subtracted 72 on the right side. Uh, sorry, divided by negative 72 on the right side, which gives me then negative 1. So we've made the coefficient of x a 1. It's not adding or subtracting anything to it, so this, this should be our solution. And uh, we can check, right? Now, I'm not going to actually show the work here just to save us a little bit of time. But if you replace this x with this negative 1 by the order, and you can just type it in, by the way, just in the calculator when you go to check this, which I am recommending to use the calculator, just take that negative 1 and replace it, uh, take that x and replace it with negative 1. And you'll see, and I guess we can do this tonight. So 8 times negative 1, that would be uh, negative 8 plus 12. That would be positive 4, and then positive 4 times negative 9. It's just order of operation. That does give us negative 36. That's a true statement. And uh, that means this is our solution. Now, I didn't show any work for that. If you need to show the work, like see it on the paper, then do it. Like you can see up here, if you just use a calculator to just type this, because you can type in the parentheses, you can type in the negatives, you can type in the multiplication if you'd like, and the addition sign and the numbers. All into the calculators we have in class. And it will, it, if you just type it in exactly like you see it, it will punch out that, uh, the negative 36 that we got. Let's do this one together. I might do this one a little bit faster, just because, again, this, none of this is new. It's just now we're combining stuff together, which you could say it makes it new, and that's fine. But I do notice the parentheses here, which indicates that we have some multiplication, and that indicates distribution. Okay, the 2 needs to be distributed into that parentheses, so I start off with two groups of three y's. How many y's would that be? Six of them. Then I have the 2 distributed to the positive 1, because it's a plus sign, so that's 2 times 1, which is... It's positive 2, so I need to show that as a plus sign. That's it. Well, this equals 20 because the 20 has nothing to combine with it right now. But now that we've taken care of distribution, I don't see any combining like terms that needs to happen. So I'm going to go to my principles of equality. All right? So that means the 6y, I'd like to isolate that by getting rid of the plus 2. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. That does get rid of it, by the way. That makes that a 0. And the 6y is now isolated because I can just drop it. And 20 minus 2, that's going to give us 18. Finally, one last principle of equality. We just want one y. We don't want six y's. We want one y. How do I change a six? How do I make a six become a one? I'm going to force it to become a one. Just divide it by itself. 
But if you do it to one side, make sure you do it to the other side there, okay? So six divided by six is one. We dropped our equal sign, and then 18 divided by six is three. Now, we got a coefficient of y that's one, one y, it's not add, added or subtracted anything to the one y, so this should be our solution. But is it our solution? Well, let's go back and check. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm just gonna put this into the calculator by replacing the y here with the three that we think it is there at the bottom in green. So I've replaced the y with the green three just so we know that we're actually testing this out. And you know, if it helps you to put a question mark over the equal sign, then do it, okay? So typing in the calculator, again, you can use the parentheses, all of them. You can use the operations. You don't even need to put a multiplication between the two and the parentheses. But three times three is nine plus one is 10 times the two is 20. That checks off. That would make, that, that replacing that y with that green three, it, it would have given us a true statement, which means that down here at the bottom, y equals three, that would be our solution. one right here we got some distribution and this one you'll see it will have some combining like terms that's okay try this one out see if you can do it and then we'll do it together okay one minute so first off on this one we do see some parentheses and distribution should always come first if we see it so i'm going to take this negative seven and first distribute it to the negative 11x so that's negative seven times negative 11x's now, before I continue with this one, some students get this mixed up with combining like terms. Remember, combining like terms is only for addition and subtraction. This one is a multiplication. So I can, I can combine those. I can multiply those out. It's like having seven groups of negative 11 x's there. That's 77 x's. They're positive, by the way, because it's a negative and a negative, which is a positive answer. So seven, 77 x's, and then I will distribute the negative seven to the four as well. So that's negative seven groups of four, which results in negative 28. It's just pause, uh, uh, a constant right there. And be careful not to distribute the negative seven to the neg this negative three term, because that's a minus sign right there. And remember, distribution only applies to multiplication. And yes, there is multiplication between the negative seven and that parentheses. So do not distribute the negative 7 to the negative 3, which means that right now I can just take everything else from that equation, the negative 108 equal sign and the minus 3 there, and just tack it onto my equation. It doesn't make the problem smaller right now, but it does get rid of the distribution for us, which would further complicate things if we were to try to solve uh, with most other methods right now. So I now have this new equation. It's the same equation, just looks different. And I do see two constants that I can combine at this point. This negative 28 and negative 23, which when I combine, I get negative 31. Okay, because that's negative 28 minus three. The rest of that problem right there, nothing else changed. Okay, so I'm just dropping it. On the right side of the equation, I don't have any other x's that I can combine with those 77 x's. And on the left, I got a constant, negative 108, no other constants to combine it with on the left. So this is my new equation, and again, it's the same exact equation, it's just that instead of this showing as negative 20 minus three, we're, we'd like to show it as negative 31, one constant instead of two, and that's okay. So I'm now on principles of equality because I don't see any combining like terms or distribution that can be done. So that's what I will do. And the first principle of equality here, I'm gonna make a zero out of that negative 31 in purple by adding 31. Yep, if I do it to one side, I better do it to the other side as well. Okay, so negative 108, I think some of you guys could do that in your head, but I can't right now. So negative 108 plus 31, I got a negative 77. And yep, that brings down the equal sign. I can drop my red 77 X's. That's how many X's there are. And the negative 31 zeroed out as planned. Okay, we planned that out, that's what happened. That's what we want. So the next thing I want here, at the very end is to make the coefficient of x a 1x, not 77x's. I don't want that many x's. I only want one of them. So how do I make, how do I force that 77 to become a 1? Just take it and divide it by itself. Okay, that does give us 1 right there, but if I do it to one side, I better do it to the other side as well. I guess we've seen an answer like this one. x is now negative 1. 
And that's okay, but let's check. Let's check, let's go back to the original equation up here at the top. And let's replace that x with negative one. Let's see if this gives us a true statement. So there's my question mark. And again, you're welcome to write that all out and do the work, or you can just put it in the calculator, which is pretty much all I'm going to do. So on this one, I got uh, negative seven, open parentheses, negative 11. Now I'm just gonna put that negative one in parentheses. Well, so negative one in parentheses, I close that parentheses, so I'm right here on the problem. I just put that parentheses in there and then plus four. But then we got another close parentheses here. So I'm gonna close it. That's just the button right above nine. That's close parentheses. And there's a minus three right there. So I make sure you don't use the negative button right there. Otherwise it will give you a jacked up answer, which we don't want. Now, before I push enter on this one, before I push enter, I'm expecting the calculator to show me this negative 108. Let's find out. Yep, negative 108. So it turns out that if you go to the original equation up here at the top and you replace x with negative 1, you get a true statement. And just to emphasize what we've learned, what that means is that if you replace that x, this x up here at the top, with any other number than negative 1, you get a false statement out of the equation. But this is the only one that's going to make this one true, okay? So, negative 1, that's our solution. There's our objective. Two objectives. I can supply, uh, simplify an equation with distribution and combining like terms if it needs to. And we've seen sometimes on some of the problems today, sometimes it has only distribution but no combining like terms. Sometimes only combining like terms with no distribution. And that last problem we saw, both. And that's okay. But then, of course, we still need to, and this is still part of the objective, which we've seen a lot of, we have to be able to solve equations with principles of equality which really just tell us whatever you do to one side, you gotta do it to the other side as well. Remember too, this principles of equality stuff, that's to make zeros and ones. You're forcing things to be zeros and ones. It's not like we're just doing this randomly. Uh, we're, we're actually trying to force something to do something else.